All right, folks, we're doing another video over here. Today we got a steel 025 chainsaw that does not run. Stick around. All right, here's the deal. I was cutting a tree down with this bad boy. Not one lick of trouble. Started uh, cleaning up the branches. Not one lick of trouble. All of a sudden it started running shittier and shittier. And then I could hardly keep it running. And then when I was cutting, it was bogging down real bad. And finally got to the point where it wouldn't run at all. So, I'll show you what the problem is. Uh, we're going to take the thing all the way apart. But first of all, we'll just start by taking the muffler off. Because that's where the problem can be seen and I'll show you what it is. I've had this problem before on this chainsaw and it doesn't say anything bad about the chainsaw because this chainsaw is like went for about 20 years or something without ever having a problem. So uh, I think what the problem is is the gas I've been mixing for it because all of a sudden I've had this twice and my blower once and I kind of blamed the blower when it happened but now I think what's happening now that this is the third time it's happened uh, I believe the problem is my gas I think so if you look here inside this hole for the exhaust you can see that the piston is badly scorned or scored or whatever and the rings are as well. That's the problem. So what we have here is I believe I was not using good enough oil to gas mix and uh, I think as a result I'm wearing out these cylinders and pistons and rings and whatnot prematurely. So after I do this repair I am going to go and buy some higher quality two cycle oil and just double check my mixing method. Like I said for years I never had an issue and I always used the steel two cycle oil and lately I haven't been using it in the last few years because I didn't I've been just buying the cheap shit and I'm pretty sure that's why I'm having issues here so we're just gonna pop that fuel line off we're gonna pop this linkage off by simply pulling it out like so and we're going to pop the throttle linkage off by simply popping that out like so. Pop that off. And we can pull this carb off now. And I had the carb off and cleaned it nine ways to Sunday. And uh, this thing is crystal clear. So that ain't the problem. Yeah, I showed you what the problem was. So I don't know why I'm even telling you what the problem isn't we already know what it is so anywho here's a little pro tip I got the little clamp like this I'm just gonna stick it on the fuel line clamp that off because we're gonna be turning this thing upside down and I don't want the gas spilling all over so we'll take the blade off get it out of the way you know once I fix this the first time it ran fantastic for a little while and it was one tree's worth of cutting I mean it was a big tree but again like I said this thing's 20 years old never had a problem and now I had a problem cut, fix it cut one damn tree and now I got the same problem just gotta pop these little plastic things off and get this angle out of the way now there's not a screw in here don't be fooled by that 
but there is I believe four screws we got to remove to get this handle off There is two more. And then we should be able to pull this handle off, like so. And we'll pull this little gizmo off. Pull the spark plug out. And we'll pull these wires off. There's two wires that pull off there. And I'll take this off now. We should be able to pull this out of here. <clears throat> this is just a rubber grommet fit. And this is a real pain in the ass to get in and out. Or it can be. Can be. I'm not saying it is. And then the other thing is this little rubber grommet deal. Just push that in. Like so. And then we should be able to pull this off. Pull the wires through there. Like so. And don't lose this little guy. This is the vent thing for the gas tank. We'll leave that on there for now. We'll get rid of this. I mean, not get rid of it, but you know. Okay. So next, we'll take off the old starterino. Well, let's first put this clamp back on so we don't lose our gas. I guess it would probably be a good idea to empty the gas, which I'm probably going to do anyway because I'm going to make new gas. I'm going to go get myself some new nice steel two-cycle oil because I don't want to keep doing this all the time, you know what I'm saying? Alright, All right. there's just four little screws that hold this bad boy on. Nice thing all these screws are the same so we can just throw them in our dish and we don't have to sort them out or nothing like that. Like so. Alright, now we have this. So, first thing I want to do is pull this little ground wire off, because if I forget about it, it's going to be a problem later. So this is the only screw that's really different. It's just a little smaller than all the other ones. So we're in the dish. Alright, now we got to pull the flywheel off. Now this one is a regular thread. The uh, gizmo on the other side is a reverse thread. So we just want to unreverse this. Usually just a few clacks with the impact gets it right off. And then we're going to take a little punch and that flywheel comes right off. And don't lose the little keyway key. It likes to stick to the magnet, so which is nice. Alright, so we got that off. And then we gotta pull this side thing off. There's a little C clip deal in here. Just pop that off. Like so. There's a washer on here, like so. Throw that in the dish. Now this should, as long as it's unlocked, this will pull right off. There's a little bearing in here. We want to make sure we keep track of. We'll just set it in there for now. Off to the side. Now this we're going to need a three quarters for, or I don't know what you folks over the pond call it but us here in the states call it a three-quarter and we're gonna go clockwise to get this bad boy off and it's just turning the whole thing so 
that sucks. So probably if we stick a spark plug in there a little bit, that'll give us a little compression. And it gave us enough resistance to get that off. Pull the spark plug back out. Next thing is there's four bolts underneath this that need to come out. Okay, so now at this point, all those should be out. Now this whole engine should just, there's nothing holding it together at this point. So you could probably pull it apart in pieces like this. At this point, this piece slides out. So this is what runs the oil pump. Get this out. Here's your crankshaft, piston, and the bottom of the thing, which is a little stuck in there, but a little persuasion. She pops right out. Here's the piston itself. You can see that it is badly scored, and I can't even get the rings off. Stuck as a duck in the muck. So, this piston is pretty much garbage, and this cylinder doesn't feel too bad, but they sell the whole cylinder and piston assembly, so we're just going to replace that. So this pops right off, and this intake tube pops right off, right off, hopefully without wrecking it. And there we go. Here's the new parts. We're going to do an unboxing here. And this should be fun. Got this off of Amazon. It was about 36 bucks. Okay. So, it seems to be packaged in there pretty good. Which is a good thing. Lots of packaging. All right, more packaging. A lot of bubble wrap, which I realize is a trademark name. So I don't know what else to call it, so we're just gonna call it bubble wrap. Okay, we got a box. I don't believe box is trademarked. Okay, we got a new spark plug. And we got a new cylinder piston assembly. And we got an extra one of these little doodads, which uh, goes in here. So I don't know why there's an extra one, but hey, there is. So get rid of the garbage. And we gonna take this off, like so. All right. Okay, there's no kind of sealant or O-ring or nothing in here. And it looks like there's a little groove for some. So I think I'm just gonna put a little Permatex or something in there. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, so we'll just run a little dab in here we'll go real light on it so it doesn't smush all over the place get inside her get inside and gum up the wikes okay now there's a little gizzard right there and that needs to go on the side of the drive side so because that actually is for the oil pump. The oil pump thing goes up in there. So that needs to be on this side. Otherwise you're going to have a problem. And then we're going to take and put this on. And you can see the, which way the shape goes. Like that. It goes on one way and one way only. So we'll stick that on with the little tab dealio. Looking out the bottom, like so. And then we'll take 
and put this little plastic piece on making sure we get the little hose on there like that and that pops on there nice and good stick that in the hole like that and get it all settled in there like that and then we'll run the screws in the bottom and we'll snug them up now the proper torque on these is two grunts let's put this side back together as long as we're here take our little dealio and run that on and that just kind of goes right in there and then we'll take our well, this mechanism and this is going to be reverse thread so we'll, what we're going to do is leave it out a little bit and then we're going to zip it in so it kind of torques itself okay we're going to call that good and take our little bearing stick it on there take this little part oh yeah there's something important here uh, if you look right in here is where that little lever off of that little first gizzer goes for the uh, that actuates the pump uh, so that spins around in there so we got to make sure that that lines up with this little notch now if you don't line that up, it ain't going to go together good. So you got to get that lined up, and it lines up pretty easy. So then we take our little washer, and our little C-clip, stick that on there like that, little needle nose, like that, and it spins freely nice and good. Now. We'll go back to this side, over here, and we'll put the flywheel on. It goes together something like that, and it should go on there nice and snug. And then we'll take our little nut, and this goes on clockwise, like so. We'll kind of do the same thing. We'll leave it out and we'll let it get some momentum. And when then when it locks on there, we'll just stop. And while we're here, we'll connect up this little ground wire here. Right there. We'll have to find our little ground wire screw. Over here. Okay, give it a good hurrah, and that's all good. Next, we'll put on, we'll put this on next, yeah, because it's a little harder to get on once you got the other parts on there. So, make sure it grabs. We got the one with the little bushing thing on it, goes in Hey. And the other regular one goes in here. Now at this point you're probably going to be ready for your next beer. Alright. Okay. So next, we'll put this handle deal on. <coughs> but before that, we want to put the cap on our Permatex because we don't want that drying up or running all over the place. That'll be on the floor. Alright, so we'll throw this on here like this. The other thing we want to do is pop this little bushing out of here for now because that's going to be easier to put in later. So we'll take our two wires, these two wires. We'll stick them through this hole, like so. 
Okay, then we'll put this little bushing on. One wire at a time. And then slide that back in. Shove it in there. Okay. Now the next trickiest part is we'll get the spark plug wire run up like that. Uh, next thing we gotta do is get that that rubber little boot deal through this hole here. So that can be tricky, but it can not be tricky as well. So what I do is carefully with your needle nose, just grab a hold of it a little bit and uh, just kind of work it through by pulling it through. It'd be pretty easy to mess this up, so use extreme caution as I am doing. And it comes through just like that. Now the other trickiest part is there's, well first we'll take this gas line and run it up through this hole here. Because that's got to go through there. And then we can put this little clippy back on there so we don't spill no gas. There's another little hose in there that's got to connect up to this orange doodad. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anywho, goes up in there. It's not that hard to get on, you just got to use your needle nose and kind of work it on there. Now what we're going to do is put this handle on. Now this handle may or may not be the biggest Rubik's Cube pain in the ass thing you ever put on. Sometimes it goes on real easy and sometimes it's a real pain in the butt. So, uh, this time it's went on pretty easy. Okay, so that's that. So all we gotta do is put in one, two, three, four screws there. Bada bing, bada boom. And we got the two that go in the bottom. One right there. And one right there. And now the other thing that's a little bit important is to pop this little guy off. This just kind of presses in there. It's just a little nylon guide. That just fits in there. But you want to pop this off so you can get this little plastic cover guy back in there. Because this little nylon thing kind of covers that up. So, yeah. And then there's a little, little plastic thing that goes in there for some reason. And then you got the two that go here. And the one that goes here. So we're really, uh, we're really moving along here, folks. Uh, we can pull this off of there now. We'll throw the carburetor on next, which is pretty simple. Want to make sure we got this little metal thing where the this part of it goes into that rubber thing. Like so, kind of push it in there, put your gasket on there, I probably need a new gasket but this one will work. And then we'll stick our carburetor on there, this comes off. A lot of times these things will be full of sawdust or mucky muck. I had this off recently so this is really clean so we're just going to put it on. But you might want to clean that out if you're doing this following along at home. Okay, so that just slides in there like that. And then we'll hook up our fuel line. 
which you just take the little needle nose and carefully, without wrecking the hose, just kind of put it on there. Like that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. If you can't, didn't see that, I'm sure you got the idea anyways. Okay, we'll hook up these wires real quick. This red one, it might not be red on yours, but it's got a smaller... Eh, no it doesn't. Okay, so anyway, put that on that little dude back there. Like so. And then the black wire goes in here just like that. And what that does is when you put the switch to the off position, it makes contact here with this little metal thing. So that's what kills it. So, okay, so we got the fuel line hooked up. We got the electric hooked up. We'll hook up our little linkages, and these are pretty easy to do. This one is for the choke, it just slides in a hole that's in there, like that. And then you can just move the choke until that goes in like that. Piece of cake. And then take your other linkage for the throttle, hook it in the hole that's in there, and take your needle nose, grab hold of that, pull the trigger, and just pop it on. Just pops on there like that. Okay. So now that we got all that on there. We'll put the air intake manifold deal on there. I don't know if yours has a gasket. Mine does not for some reason. And we'll take our two little nuts, which take a 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. It's the yellow one. That's all you need to know. Whether it's standard or whatever the crazy new thing they've been using, whatever they call it, metric. Either way, the yellow one will work. Eight or five sixteenths. Just kind of snug that up a little bit. And put that wire back there. We'll uh, gap the spark plug properly. I'll do that off camera and the reason I did that off camera is because I didn't really do it and we'll just put this in and hope for the best uh, I used to have a spark plug gapper and I know they're like a dollar or free but for some dumb reason I don't have one so it looked pretty good. So stick that back on there. Like so. Put the air filter, which I've recently cleaned. It's not new. It's not the best, but it's good enough. Okay, take this little guard dealio. Stick that on there like that. Not like that. Like that snaps into place and we can put this cover back on like that okay this intake side is done now we'll take our two little muffler bolts and they simply just hook around the back so a lot of times when you're dinking around they'll fall out and whatnot but but if you get them started in there, and then you take your little metal plate deal and get it on there, that'll hold them bolts in place. 
you gotta remember to remember the way that thing is situated. So it was situated like that. Okay, so now that's on there, and then bolts are gonna pretty much stay where they need to be. And then we can take our little muffler and stick it on there and carefully pop that back on like that and then run our little nuts on there and that should tighten up nice okay mufflers on nuts back together and all we gotta do is put the blade on Pops right on there like that. We'll take our little cover, stick it on there, take our nuts, stick them on there. Before we snug them up, let's just tighten up the blade a little. And That's probably good. Doesn't have to be real tight, just enough to hold it, hold it in place. And then we can snug these up. I'm getting some new fuel. I'm only gonna try this just to see if it works, which it will probably. So let's give it a give it a try. Okay, success. Now we finish this beer and we just finish a few more beers because it's pretty dark out right now and late. So uh, we'll get some new gas tomorrow and we will finish cutting up this tree tomorrow. And I gotta go. Adios.